Welcome back to The Breakfast. Our next conversation this morning is, uh, is going to be on the court order uh, uh, that has been given to unfreeze the bank accounts of the end SARS protesters. It, uh, of course, there was a news story yesterday. Uh, Federal High Court in Abuja, Nigeria's capital, ordered the CBN to unfreeze the bank accounts of 20 end SARS protesters. Uh, the presiding judge Ahmed Mohammed gave that ruling uh, on Wednesday, rather ordering that the accounts be frozen following the agreement by the legal teams of the CBN and the defendants to end the case. And it says uh, there are processes filed deemed to have been withdrawn in a spirit of reconciliation. The suit is hereby struck out, the judge said. We've invited to speak with us this morning, Mr. Dotun Hassan, a legal practitioner. Good morning to you, Mr. Hassan. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. All right. So let's go to... Um, the the you know initial you know part of this whole conversation let's get your thoughts first on the decision to freeze these accounts uh some people have described it as simple or simply intimidation of these 20 NSARS protesters do you agree or do you think that you know it may have happened for a different reason well uh, the, the issue of the uh, NSARS, uh and they let it go again. Uh, it's not, and uh, it, it's an unexpected uh, uh, miscarriage of justice. Firstly, it's an issue that is concentrated more on police brutality that started with um, uh, how much injustice was done on the citizens by men of the Nigerian police force and the anti special and robbery. Sport. And uh, that protest lasted uh, for many days and more. When a demand was on the federal government to review its operational modus operandi. And in view of that crisis, then the federal government, through the office of the president, was called on phone to intervene and uh, stop further operational uh, recognition or if it is based for any special anti-robbery or any tactical uh, unit of the police, which as a result of the killing in Delta State of one young man and several other killings that have happened uh, yeah, in the past uh, part of uh, Kalebi. Mr. Mr. Hassan, can you hold on? Um, first of all, it's a, it's a struggle with the quality of on your sound, um, so I hope that it it, it can get clearer. But um, I, I want you to you know fast forward to the decision after the protest, after what happened um, on, on the twentieth of October, the decision by the CBN to freeze those accounts. Um, do you agree that of course it was necessary? Uh, because uh, there, were, there were investigations that needed to, be, needed to be carried out on those accounts. Maybe they were suspected of fraud or, or anything that you know, sounded like that. The prison of the accounts in the first day is not in the interest of justice. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wrong, um, uh, it creates a wrong impression on the part of our government. Because at that period, the government is expected to be sober, to also reflect uh, love for its citizens. But at that same period, wherein it, the, the catastrophe was from the government, because the Nigerian army was fingered in that crisis. So, freezing the account by the federal or by the CBN uh, is not even connected to the whole crisis. This avenues the fact that. Um, the, the, the protesters and uh, leaders of the entrance uh, protest, uh, whose accounts were being um, frozen as a result of um, maybe uh, craft uh, funding and all other measures of support received during that period. To me, it's a natural cause of nature. Once you are in a, in a stream of uh, crisis, people come to your aid and people respond positively. So in that regard, whatever that might have uh, occurred in that period was as a result of support received. So there was no terrorism or any act that would have amounted to the prison of the account in the first place. So the judiciary 
for unfreezing the account uh, is a good omen. And we hope the federal government don't do uh, anyone else wanting to appeal that judgment. Because sometimes we, we, we keep to wonder who are the advisors of this government themselves. Why must the government who ought to feel remorse and sober for committing such an uh, unimaginable uh, uh, havoc of killing and uh, maiming of Nigerian youth to still go further uh, to freeze accounts of those that were being uh, attacked. And we are still aware uh, that the switch is still being affected as a result of this. It's been declared wanted. This is not what we expect from the government. And I believe that emboldened the Nigerian army not to see the panel as the base for them to honor. Because if the federal government have played their role up in the issue of ensuring adequate justice, by now, uh, um, Ed ought to have been rolling in the Nigerian army, in the Nigerian police, for committing such uh, absurdity. So I believe uh, the, all the need now is for government under President Muhammad Buhari uh, to really ensure that the proper thing needs to be done. Right. Beyond the panel, there is a whole lot that um, in, there is a whole lot of injustice embedded. So there is need for the federal government to institutionalize that panel as a permanent uh, um, base to review such uh, recurrent injustice. Mr. Mr. Hassan. <laughs> Mr. Hassan, when these accounts were frozen, this was in October when the CBN, you know, took this matter to the court saying they were going to place a non-debit order on the accounts of these, of, of these protesters, many Nigerians said it was an attack on their democracy and it was basically a trampling of their rights to peaceful assembly. Uh, do you agree with that? Well, you know, the, the, the constitution of the right uh, are in a labor right as far as we are citizens of uh, this country. But unfortunately, uh, the answers of the of our laws, or those at the end of our affairs, I don't think they've taken time, maybe one or two days, to read the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I see more of um, of a, 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 a not balance in as much as every citizen uh, uh, bank account is to his own private use. That means that right to private life for the citizen. But in the respect of the enter protest, that was not an act of anti-government or terrorism act. The government went to characterize that protest as a terrorism act. And for, for an account to be frozen in that manner, that means that person uh, is acting as a proxy to some terrorist organization. But be that as it may, our federal government are aware that they, they are only applying a decoy to suppress the demand of Nigerian youth. And to us, we believe there's a need for us to have the rethink in that regard. Right. Sadly, we've lost uh, connection with uh, Hassan. We'll try to reconnect with him and uh, continue that conversation. But really, this is something so important because it affects, you know, basically the rights of the fundamental youth of Nigeria. I mean, if people can come out to protest peacefully, this is their right as enshrined in the Constitution, Absolutely. and the government can take such actions. I have no idea what our future is. I mean, they've been protesting in Myanmar and several other parts of the world. I am yet to hear stories of the government, you know, taking this action and freezing their accounts, basically cutting them off financially from the rest of the world. So, so the fear, you know, for me is really, um, you know, if this, is, if this isn't challenged and we don't have a judicial system that can always guarantee the constitutional rights of every Nigerian citizen, um, it gives um, a government the rights and, of course, give a, go give a government more leverage to do even worse next time. Um, and so... Um, now, you know, we're talking about reconciliation. You know, it then makes you also question, so if these accounts were supposed, supposedly funding terrorism in, in, the, in the past, 
you know, have they now reconciled, you know, between both legal teams and then decided that maybe they weren't funding terrorism? It doesn't even add up because how would people um, fund for funding terrorism go ahead to protest police brutality? It just doesn't even add up. But anyway, well, we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Uh, uh, Mr. Hassan, it will be joining us live in the studio in just a second. Welcome back to The Breakfast. And of course, uh, the conversation continues here, still talking about the court order to the CBN to unfreeze 20 bank accounts uh, of uh, NSARS protesters. Uh, we, of course, are joined uh, live here in the studio by legal practitioner Dr. Hassan. Thank you, and uh, good morning once again. Thanks for joining good us. Good morning. It's a All pleasure right. to be here. Um, so so I, was, I was asking, you know, um, earlier about the conflict between, you know, at some point they are charged with, either terrorism yeah. or whatever, you know, uh, charges, you know, that were necessary at that time that, na that made it necessary for the courts to allow the CBN to freeze their accounts. How can those things simply be thrown away in the spirit of reconciliation? Well, you know, the, we had a, a national uh, um, breakdown of law and order as far as uh, the crisis of NSAS was, um, uh, was beamed to the whole world. Even to CNN, everybody acknowledges that uh, the government erred. And uh, as far as the laws are concerned, he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. And there must also be a uh, principle of uh, 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 social justice. And as the situation that led to the reconciliation in courts, uh, to us, there is no reconciliation anywhere because uh, the meat of the matter itself. Uh, is still raging on in several panels and all other set up um, 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 uh, in various states and within the National Marriott Commission and all that. So I just see the the essence of the 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 court ruling on amicable resolution for parties to douse further uh, legal attrition. Uh, to me, is that uh, it's allowed in in cases whereby you know if parties free settlement terms so you drop your weapon i drop mine and we we'll go into discourse but to us uh it's merely a decoy uh to suppress uh the injustices uh that occurred on the 28th of october 2020 and to to many that day uh will still be in history as one of uh day to remember matthias that died in the course of our fight for a good governance, for social justice, right? Because the answer struggle is beyond just police brutality alone. It rests on our democracy. It rests on our value system as far as our nation is concerned. It rests on how much wreckage corruption has done to our psyche. And for a generation who's yet to see a baton of hope from the present leadership of elders that are leading us from the inception of our democracy, uh, um, of our pre-independence to date, are still the one leading us without giving us that value of governance. Yeah. And that's our demand. For the, the, does, does this in any way, this move in any way, um, affect the um, narrative with regards to the likely protest on the 13th, which is um, on well, Saturday? Not at all. The, the likely, pro the, the, pro the, the uh, let's say in quote, uh, the, the, ad uh, the, the proposed protest uh, is a different um, issue in, in its entirety that emanates from the Lagos panel. We know we have several panels, but you know, you know, Lagos be the epic center of the NSAS uh, crisis as a result of the, the, the death. Although there are deaths in other parts, in Okoko, in Ajangbadi, a lot of lives were lost on that day, but due to the euphoria, the the 28 generated at the Lekki Toll Plaza yes, yes. that led to the panel uh, headed by uh, retired Justice uh, Kobe and all other members of the panel uh, as, alongside uh, uh, Mr. Ebon Adegorua and uh, some other uh, Maje Kodumi and all other members uh, that were there. But be that as it may, as I rightly mentioned earlier, uh, 
the panel was empowered by the governor instrument of authority, wherein the panel further requested for enlargement of their duties in order to cover the toll gates and all other brutality that happened on the 28th October massacre, meaning the locus inco, which is the venue of that crisis, is an issue because what happened on that day, there was switch off of light, there are a lot of, um, of skins, uh, uh, um, uh, maybe dark edges that were yet to be unraveled. And the governor handed over that instrument of authority via letter, empowering them to take over the toll plaza as a means of one, um, arriving at a forensic evidence that will be admissible in fact, because we cannot lean on ESA or media um, um, yes. views, but be that as it may, the governor that handed over that instrument is not like what we call quick, quick plantain to solo solace. Whatever the governor, whatever belongs to the land is also part of it. So what we expect is that no Jupiter, except the, at the end of the panel, we take over that power from that panel, except the governor withdraws that power. Even the panel itself do not have such right to hand over because it behoves on them that what was handed over to you by the Eugene authority, you went and handed it over to a subdelegated uh, authority, which is the LCC. And LCC is also the principal suspect. When you have his principal suspect in the matter and the mode of evidence that you have against that principal suspect, you just like you, have, you arrested an armed robber, uh, armed robber now and you caught him with firearms. That firearm becomes the evidence in okay. issue. The firearms we are talking about is the locus inco. For them to go via application, when they are being summoned to respond, in the process of them responding before the panel, they brought up an application firstly firstly for insurance um, review and assessment that was the first application before the four eyes of the whole world your yeah, media what happened next was during the delivery of ruling that which now covered beyond the assessment now for operational resumption of business meaning the entire panel in regard to investigation of that locus inco is ended. Meaning, and as a date, quite unfortunately, that we have two sides of the coin um, being, the that we are looking at angle now, the, 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 the chairman of the panel admitted that the, the report, the forensic report is ready. A principal member of the panel, Ebon Adegura, said the forensic report is yet to be delivered. And remember, these people were sworn on oath. If anything, by virtue of what both are maybe said now, Arguments. the chairman can be taken on for perjury. It could be committed. She, she, you know, you know, you know. I believe lawyers and hers. He knows no one. We there are other angles that we have to look into. Sure. This if we are not even looking at either SEC was right to be given all that. Where we found out that. that there is an iota of lies that is now going to taint the entire um, confidence, trust of that unbiasedness of that panel. It shows, it behoves that we might be requesting the governor to suspend that panel and reconstitute a new one. Okay, Mr. Hassan, okay. let's go back to this issue of the court order to CBN to freeze the account of the 20 uh, NSAS protesters. There are many issues in Nigeria's history about government officials refusing to obey court orders. Yeah. So many cases, lots of people in prison that the, the court has ordered the government to release them, lots of other important issues no, like that. that. Now, this is just a court ordering the CBN to unfreeze the bank accounts of these 20 NSAS protesters. Given our political history, given our history of obedience or disobedience to the judiciary, 
what's the what's the hope of the common man or of these 20 enters protesters that the CBN would listen to the court, adhere to their ruling, and indeed and truly unfreeze their bank accounts? Well, I, I believe they say power corrupt and absolute power corrupt, absolutely. And um, in our own history, I see it as a black man syndrome. Uh, this sit tight approach to power that the kings do no wrong uh, is one of the hailmen that is killing our democracy. And we are yet to really um, get out of the, the, the web of that um, um, infractions in our system. But um, quite uh, notable is the fact that the, the, you know, the, the unfreezing of the, of the account is as a result of mutual um, settlement of terms in order for parties to, to douse down all arms of uh, further legal attrition. I believe um, it's just a stop to way because the, the freezing of the account itself uh, has no basis in law. There's no, no reason. But because the governor, the government just wants to grandstand and say we are still in power. Let us do everything to, to, to bury whatever. But are you optimistic that the CBN would actually unfreeze his accounts? The, 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 it, it's, a, it's another case in its entirety. Because we've, we've known uh, in the recent time, this is a government that chooses which court order to obey. And uh, court orders are now mere, mere figment of imagination of those court rulings or the judges that are bringing up. And um, to me, I'm partially um, afraid that um, beyond the unfreezing itself, are we free? If that is the case, it's not just unfreezing an, an account that tells us that we are free. It's, it's a locus classicus. It's a precedent that we've set on ground now. That if you do me, if you complain against the federal government, Your the next thing the government goes by is to make sure that you are demo frozen. demobilized financially. So that when you are demobilized, they can they will now know who and who. Is there any hope of... So, um, so, but to me, I believe that it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's not yet who We love this country. And uh, I wouldn't want us to lose hope. We'll keep to build our democracy. That's what we are doing here. We are telling the CBN governor to take the side of, um, of posterity and look to, into the issue, advise the government in the best interest of the state. I think that will go a long way. CBN in itself is an act of parliament. It's, it's an institution that needs to operate under the, with the principle of uh, 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 must operate with principle of social justice and, and law. But if it's joining itself in a bandwagon of political and euphoria, when politicians want to take charge of situation, is be, they don't operate on institutionalized level. They operate on self and individualistic interest. selfish interest. So Qu that is the quick, missing link. Quickly, in, in, if you can do it in a minute, please. Um, how do we um, stop our, our... How do we stop this thing where court orders can be given you know just so easily without any proper arguments as to why you know this might be going against the rights of the of the citizens well it's about institution it's about having the right persons in the hands of affairs it's about merit if ab initio people are placed in positions of authority or merit and, com and competency and capacity without due cause to nepotism or selfish interest, then you get it right. But once your appointment is predicated on which zone is this person from, is it from my, from my region or ethnic background, we are not getting it right. This nation right. deserves a national orientation. All right. Um, Dr. Hassan, Dr. legal Dr. practitioner, thank you so thank much for you. stepping in and for speaking with us. We, of course, uh, would continue to have this conversation to see what Saturday brings. Uh, we hope that the uh, conversation doesn't go beyond, um, you know, anything that, you know, is peaceful. 
Um, we hope also that the federal government understands the role that it should play as a mediator and, of course, as um, what the other side of the coin at a time like this to ensure that there is peace and there is um, an increased uh, level of trust yes. between the government and citizens. And we hope that the CBN actually obeys this court's order Absolutely. and does as it should. Absolutely. Uh, stay with us. When we come back, we're talking rail lines, uh, transnational uh, um, uh, business and economies, and, of course, uh, the Nigeria-Niger rail line.